and we are back with part three, I believe, or is it part four? I have no idea. But when we left off, Mao proclaimed victory for the People's Republic of China in Beijing. Chiang Kai-shek moved the Republic of China to Taiwan, and both are claiming to be the official China. But while the civil war may have come to an end, the new battle was only just beginning, and this one would be the most violent and bloody of them all. In the early years of his rule, Mao set about establishing a Soviet-style socialist state through a series of really cleverly named campaigns. I mean, if he was around today, he would make a great brand marketing director. There was the Hundred Flowers Campaign, where the CCP endorsed freedom of speech and encouraged intellectuals to voice their opinions and ideas. But the claim to let a hundred flowers bloom wasn't as rosy as it sounds. Not long after, hundreds of thousands of progressive thinkers were rounded up and sent to re-education labor camps and even executed. Some scholars actually believe that the whole campaign was just a ruse to identify the enemies of the state. And there was the Great Leap Forward, whose ambitious aim to rapidly transform China into a modern industrialized society actually sent the nation way backward into an economic and human catastrophe. Mao's great idea was to leverage China's massive population in order to develop the agricultural and industrial sectors, grain and steel, at the same time. So millions of people were forced into these communes where they lived and just worked around the clock. The communes were spread out across the vast countryside, but the central government still maintained a really firm grip on it. It set impossibly high goals of food production with really strict quotas on consumption, and then local officials caving into the pressure, they continuously exaggerated the results of their harvest to the party, sending more and more grain to the government and leaving almost nothing for the peasants. Within two years alone, between 15 and 55 million people starved to death in a nation that was one of the largest global exporters of grain. Let me explain that again. So a nation that was exporting more grain than almost any other country on earth had people domestically who were dying from starvation. Think about that. And even at its lowest estimate of 15 million people, the Great Leap Forward was the deadliest famine in the history of the world. Unsurprisingly, Mao emerged from the Great Leap Forward politically weakened, but he was still standing. Many of his comrades felt a catastrophe at that sale was a sign to change course. And uh, Mao could sense that. But rather than allow for reform, he catapulted the nation into a decade-long period of political and social chaos by using the masses to reassert his control of the party. How did he do that? Well, he called on young people everywhere to eliminate the bourgeoisie capitalists that he said had infiltrated Chinese society. Rebellion was justified, and millions of Mao's Red Guards, as they came to be known for the little red book of Mao's quotations that became the sacred text of a generation, they unleashed terror and violence across the country, attacking their teachers in schools, their bosses in factories, government institutions, random people in the streets, even their own parents. It was total, total anarchy, and it was encouraged by people at the highest level. School work and just ordinary lives were forgotten, and revolution was the only cause. And it wasn't just people that had to go. Mao urged his followers to rid the nation of the four olds. Old customs, old culture, old habits, and old ideas. So much of China's rich and deep centuries-old history and culture was destroyed during this period. Books were burned and buildings were destroyed and, and cultural practices were, were not allowed anymore. I mean, the cultural loss is impossible to measure. But we do know that somewhere around one and a half million lives were lost and millions more were imprisoned and tortured during this time. The Cultural Revolution lasted all the way until Mao's death in 1976. The next man to lead China and carry the nation out of this trauma was himself a victim of the Cultural Revolution spending much of it in a forced labor camp. Deng Xiaoping and China's next big move is up next. <laughs>